lanes I've been driving this train Years in this lane, there's no stop in this flame Cause I came to the game and I changed it to play How I like rearranged it to my own domain Yeah, I got what it takes, made lots of mistakes Taking shots, skipping breaks, feeling lost, feeling great Popping off, singing straight, never stop, never changed All the squad here to play and I've got something to say, yeah I work hard each and every day I get lost in the words I say I don't push pause, no I push play I won't stop till I make a change What's up, freaks? Welcome to Steve Knows, episode number 10 This is our live weekly show on having a business mindset That's what this is all about We have other shows on personal development Some on health, fitness, nutrition, mindset family stuff, but this one's all about business, all about making more mother freaking money. That's what this is about. That's what Steve knows about. Today, we're going to talk about delegation. Do you know how to delegate, what to delegate, when to delegate, how to get shit off your plate, how to share the load so you can delegate so that you can elevate, letting go of shit so you can grow, scale or else you will freaking fail when you try to go at this on your own. Last week, we were talking about creating systems and processes and SOPs, and that's why that's set up perfectly for the delegation piece, because you can't delegate until you have shit set up, till you have processes and those SOPs. So check out Steve Knows episode number nine from last week for a little more in detail on that. Basically, Steve Knows is a live show on how to have a no excuses business mindset, guiding you to better leadership, communication, teamwork, and problem solving so that you can make more money with strategy and structure, so that you can operate to dominate on the battlefield of business and make no mistake about that's exactly what the business world is, the world of entrepreneurship. It is a fucking battlefield, exactly what it is. This show is is for business owners, executives, managers, team leaders, as well as their teams that are looking to level up in their daily development, teaching, and training of your team where we're going to guide you on how to become even better leaders, communicators, and problem solvers so that you'll be prepared, for, again, for the battlefield of business. And if you don't know, I operate with one of the, one of the companies I have is LTD. That's Leadership and Team Development, where we travel around, myself and my Navy SEAL partner, we travel around the country to companies and train your teams in person in one and two-day workshops. We have them scheduled all throughout this year coming up. There is still openings available where we can come to your team and coach your team and train your team on leadership, teamwork, communication, problem solving. And we really tie in things from the project, which is the family, fitness, finances, and faith so they can have more fulfillment in their lives and have better work-life synergy, work-life satisfaction, what are otherwise known as work-life balance. But this week, we're going to talk mainly on delegation. And last week, again, was the SOPs. There is a a system. There is an order that you need to do things in order to scale your business. You cannot delegate shit before you created the processes, the systems. You can't even create the processes and systems and SOPs until you've created the foundational elements like core values, your mission, your vision, your values, your goals. We've talked about that in previous episodes, so go back and check those out. Today is all about delegation, about knowing what to delegate, and what order to delegate shit. And there's some, there's several ways you could do it. You've seen probably, I call it the, the, it's just the four by four quadrants that help you to make decisions. You put an X down the middle of a piece of paper, an X here, and you label all four of those quadrants with different things. And you make decisions based off of that. You can make hiring decisions, firing decisions, uh, teamwork decisions, money decisions. And today we're going to talk about making delegation decisions based on that about you yourself, the shit you're doing, the shit that's on your plate. Is it something that's in your zone of genius? Is it something that you like and you're good at? And even when you're narrowed down to just those things, you even have to start delegating some of those things out because just because you like it and you're good at it doesn't mean that you personally should be doing it. You might like creating Instagram posts and you might be good at creating Instagram posts, but should you necessarily be doing that all the time? Probably fucking not. So think if you had a, a, a chart a X, a, a, a cross right down the middle, four quadrants. Think of one corner, let's call it corner number four. And corner number four is tasks that you 
that you don't like doing and you're not good at. Let's call tasks three tasks that you like doing but are not good at. Let's call quadrant two tasks you're good at but don't like doing. And task one, things that you do like doing and you are good at. So again, four was things you don't like, not good at. Three was that you do like, but not good at. Number two was you're good at, but don't like doing. And number one was you do like and you are good at. So you're basically going to delegate those in that order. Obviously, number four, you need to get rid of first. That's the things that you don't like doing and you're not good at. Then why the fuck are you doing it? Get rid of it. Find out who would be a better fit for that that task, that job, that position, maybe that role, maybe even that whole freaking job and career and role in the business or even business itself. Who knows? But think about it. Just because you're not good at something and don't like doing something doesn't mean that there's not someone out there that does like doing it and is good at it. Your fucking goal and mission to take your business to the next level is to find those people that are good at and like doing The things that you are not good at and you don't like doing. That's your first order of priority of what you need to delegate. Because in the beginning, if you're an entrepreneur or a a smaller company, a startup, whatever the hell you want to call it, you're often going to be an owner operator. You're going to be doing all four of these fucking quadrants for years and years. But eventually, you need to start delegating this stuff out. You need to get an assistant. You need to hire some admin. You need to hire, eventually, some operators that can actually get the service out there. Hiring customer service people. You need to hire a team. Eventually, you're going to hire sales and marketing. That's probably going to be some of the last things you're going to delegate are the sales, the marketing, team development, team culture, and self-development. That's like your finalized things that you're going to let let go of, probably. Eventually, imagine a perfect world. All you had to work on was team development and self-development. That's like your 0.001% of the shit you should be working on. So your first order of business is to get rid of the shit that you don't like doing and you're not good at. Now, after that, there's things that you like doing and you're not good at or things you don't like doing, but you are good at. Now, if you don't like doing something and you're good at it, that's been known in the, in the underworld of the business world as a living fucking hell. Because if you don't like doing something, but you're very good at it, you're going to be stuck doing it because you're good at it. So you're, they're going to want you to keep doing it. And if you fucking hate it, It's going to be a living hell because you're going to be stuck in that position. You're not going to be able to get rid of it. And you hate doing it, but you're good at it. It's a shitty place to be. So that's actually your next thing to get rid of. It's something you don't like doing and you're good at. Because if you don't like doing it and you're good at it, if you're good at it, it should be easy for you then to delegate it, to teach it, to coach someone, to train someone, to guide someone, to mentor someone to take that spot. Because you're good at it. And you don't like doing it. So that should be an easy one for you to delegate out. That actually, actually is the easiest one to delegate out, even more than the one that you don't like doing and you're not good at. Because if you don't like doing it and you're not good at it, you're not going to be that very good at teaching it because you're not fucking good at it. It's actually, but you do need to get rid of that first. So quadrant three, you can hang in there a little longer because you are good at it. At least. So at least you're getting some results and outcome, but you need to get rid of that as soon as possible. But it's going to be easy for you to teach someone, coach someone, train someone, guide one, someone to find someone who does like doing that shit. And you make them good at it because you're good at it. Make sense? The next one is, is tasks that you like doing but not good at. Now, that's an in-betweener. You like doing, but you're not freaking good at. Now, if you like doing it, you probably will have the energy, make the effort, go above and beyond to learn, to study, to train to put in some time outside of your own personal time to get better at it because you like doing it. So hopefully the fact that you like doing it, you should never be in that quadrant for too long. If you like doing it and you're not good at it, you should like it enough. That should be motivation enough for you to get better at it to make it something that eventually you are good at and do like doing. Or if you're not good at it and you like it and you're working, you're working, you're trying and you just don't fucking have what it takes. Unfortunately, just because you like doing it, if you're not good at it, you're not improving, you're not getting better, it needs to be delegated out. You need to stop freaking doing it. Just because you like doing it, if you're getting shitty results, it's useless, waste of time, waste of energy, waste of, uh, of productivity, you're not being efficient. Then let's look at the, the top of the, of, of the barrel. That was group number one. That was things you like doing and you are good at. Again, once you get, if all the things you're doing are in that quadrant, that's a good fucking place to be. 
But that's still not the best. You still need to even start narrowing that down. Because just because, again, like I said earlier, just because you're good at something and you like doing it doesn't mean that you personally should be fucking doing it. So that's the first way to look at it about how to narrow this shit down. How to delegate this stuff out. So just like last week we had SOPs, you need an SOP on how to delegate shit. First thing is to do, decide what to delegate and what order. And we just did that off of that four by four quadrant. Decide what shit you need to get off your plate, get off your shoulders, what order, and you pick the order by those quadrants, depending on what quadrants those things are in, going in order, four, three, two, one, and prioritize them. Which ones need to go first? Obviously, the stuff you're not good at, you don't like doing, shit's got to go. The stuff that you're good at but don't like doing, that's got to go next. The stuff you're good at, or sorry, like doing but not good at, that goes next. Either you get good at it or you get rid of it. It's got to go. And then once you narrow those down and you've delegated all three things, that might take you years or fucking decades. I don't know. It depends on your situation and your setup. Once all three of those are done, then you start going on, on quadrant one. So decide what to delegate, what order, prioritize it. That is step number one of the delegation process. Number two is find the right person. You've heard, this, you've heard the ways the right person, the right seat of the right bus. And are they on the right seat of the bus? Are they on the right fucking bus? Is the bus going to the right place with the right people? All that good stuff. Find the right person for that task. Try to find someone who likes it and is good at it. Match the freaking project, the task, the role, the objective, the position with the person. And you do that with that same quadrant. Balancing it. How, cl- what, how close can they be to quadrant one? Maybe quadrant two, three, four. So it's a reverse process, finding the right, selecting the right person. From there, once, all right, so you've decided what needs to get delegated. You put in the freaking order of priority, selecting, you select the person who's the best fit for that position, the right seat on the right bus, going to the right location. You now need to communicate that SOP, that process, that procedure that you created that we talked about last week on episode number nine. You need to create, communicate that freaking workflow, the detailed, documented SOP that you created and clearly communicate the outcome you're looking for and, and how this task, how this job, how this role, how whatever this freaking person is doing fits into the bigger picture of the foundational mission, vision, values, goals we talked about weeks and weeks ago. From there, once you communicate that, that task and that SOP and that process, that procedure, you need to give them the damn resource they need, whatever it is, the paperwork, the files, the passwords, the, the, whatever the resource are, maybe it's even money, whatever it is. From there, you need to specify what level of delegation and authority they have. How much freedom they have, how much decision making they have. That would be a whole nother topic for a whole nother show where we go through the levels of delegation. That also we do in our course of how to clone yourself. We actually have a course on OCD Online of how to clone yourself. And that has to do with the hiring, firing, onboarding, delegation, creating SOPs, how to clone yourself so that you can scale or and not freaking fail. So you have to specify what level of delegation, what level of freedom and authority and decision making they have, especially when it comes to money and bigger organizational decisions. That's the next step. From there, you've done all those steps. It's simple. Get out of the fucking way. Get out of the damn way. Give them some freaking room to operate. Let them run with that shit. But of course, still know that you are in a supervisory role. Not micromanaging, not doing everything, but a supervisory role. That's what you need to think about. Give them all the resources, get out of the damn way, and then schedule and plan out a check-in slash feedback slash supervision as necessary. Depending on what the task is, maybe it's daily, maybe it's weekly, maybe it's monthly, whatever it is, check in and provide feedback as needed. There's your, your, your framework for delegation. Now, we go much deeper into detail. Each one of those has its own separate course in the Clone Yourself OTD Online course. So if you want information about that, just send me a message. I will hook you up when that is uh, available. But as I mentioned earlier, the LTD, the Leadership and Team Development Program, which myself and my Navy SEAL partner, Ray Care, we travel all around the country and we teach this type of stuff. We basically take things from the military, leadership, communication, teamwork, problem solving from the military, things with real world life, having families and things from the entrepreneurship world and combine all that together and train and coach and guide and mentor your team so that they can become better problem solvers, so that they can become better leaders. That's what the LTD is about, the leadership 
and team development program is all about. It's, again, the leadership aspect is giving them self-discipline, a clear vision, core values, trust, teaching them to lead from the front. Communication is, is them clearly telling, showing, giving examples, showing it, setting due dates, communication, clear communication. And then problem solving. Keep solving problems. Solve one problem, might create another one. Solve them until you close the loop, get the freaking outcome you're looking for. And then, of course, teamwork has to do with a lot of this stuff. About do they, where do they fall on that spectrum of the work that they're doing? That's what this is all about. The, the LTD project, leadership and team development project is where we, we pretty much manufacture and manu- manifest a culture of leadership, ownership, accountability, and candid feedback where your team becomes wired to generate internal motivation rather than always having to be externally motivated by you or their manager, their boss, the owner, whatever it is. And this occurs sometimes through, through challenging situations, through teaching, through interaction, through sometimes feedback, sometimes tough situations, tough questions, tough communication. And listen, these leadership, teamwork, and problem-solving evolutions are proven to be highly effective and customizable regardless of whatever type of business or industry you're in so that your team can walk away with immediately implementable real-world tactics and strategies to help your team overcome whatever struggles they're going through while exploiting any hidden opportunities that they have for growth and profit where we take a deep dive into the foundation of your team in a, in a highly immersive and granular approach focusing on extreme attention to detail so that they start treating the business as if it's their own. Preparing them, as I said in the beginning, for the battlefield of business. Imagine if they had military-like leadership, communication and teamwork like the Navy SEALs, discipline, mindset, and motivation of the United States Marines. Think about that. That was how they would lead towards an outcome. That's how they would solve problems quickly and effectively and communicate effectively. That's how they would start treating the business as if it's their own. That's what it's all about. And at the same time, having that work-life balance, work-life synergy, work-life satisfaction that we're talking about. So this is what it's all about. And and delegation is a huge part of it. It was in the military. It's in the entrepreneurship world. And it's in the corporate world. That's what we do is blend all this together to help out your freaking team in the LTD. So if you want information about that, about how we can come in and we can install a new operating system into your team, mentally, physically, emotionally, financially, put a message down below. Let me know. Contact me. We can set it up. We can jump on the phone and have an interview call to see if the LTD training is a good fit for you and your company and your team and delegation, creating SOPs, standard operating procedures, core values, mission, vision, values, goals, and all this leadership, teamwork, communication, problem solving is all part of it. And each week we dive into a different aspect here on Steve Knows. So this has been Steve Knows episode number 10. If you need help with anything, have any additional questions or comments, put them down below. If you want to jump on the phone and talk about the different team training programs or even the one-on-one high-level personal discipline and development peak performance accountability coaching we could do for you in a one-on-one capacity, send me a message. Let's talk about it. I will talk to you later in case you didn't see this. Look at this. In case no one told you yet today, look at the back of the new Freak Code shirt where it says, you are fucking awesome. No excuses. I feel nauseous, believe me. Never had a lot of shit come easy. Had to work hard, struggle just to be me. Had to rise.